Okay, so um, here we have um, the Shiner, which is um, kind of like the outlier of, um, of the whole Passerine brand. It's something that I started in, um, in 2013, and um, it was um, a blend of, uh, it, it, on the label it said Syrah, but it was actually Merlot that I blended in there. Um, it was just two barrels, so it made the ones in it, and I think it, it did really well with, I think Chris and Eve liked it a lot, and um, it was a great one. So that's the, how it started. It was in the beginning, it was Brad Pitt, but um, now I've changed it, and it, um, it, it, this guy is more like a Tom Hardy-ish kind of character. Um, it's, a, it's a wine that's very uniquely marketed as, as well. It's, um, it comes with a crime novel, so it's... It's it's not a taken a, a, a take untaken, but it uh, um, but it is um, it is in that um, in that realm. So it's um, it's a crime novel, and then the um, the um, the lead character is, um, is 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 John Maria. So he's not a he's not Benny Frisel, but it's it's in the same kind of <laughs> kind of thing. So um, it's a very unique wine. It's a very unique um, marketing opportunity. Um, in, in this wine, it's Sauvignon Blanc and then um, Semio Gris. And I think there's uh, some Semio Gris has um, made some headway um, as far as that it's um, it's something that South Africa tries to, to claim to itself. It's what they call it um, Roy Grundreif or something like that because it is quite unique in the fact that this wine, um, in some years, it, the, the berries turn pink um, and it still makes a white wine. Um, so it's a, it's it's a, it's a varietal of many different um, uh, techniques and, and colors and all that, and it makes a very velvety wine. It's like um, I'm quite pleased in how it turned out. The Semio definitely um, it gives it um, that beautiful tropical herbaceousness where the Sauvignon Blanc is, is just in its tropical and then get a little bit of a minerality to it. Um, it's clean. You've got a beautiful texture. It's um, it's it's a little bit reminiscent of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a white Bordeaux, as far as um, just that beautiful opulence in, in impurity of the wine. I also think um, the the semi gris has um, brought in a lot of um, exotic spice within the wine. It's um, it's it's it's, it's, mm. um, it, it, it brings it a, a, a lot of a posh feel. And uh, having um, some Sauvignon Blanc in there at 83%, you would probably expect it to be much more racy. But now this wine has is, is, is got much more um, relatable fruit into it, but yeah. with, uh, with a lot of um, length on, on, on the finish. It, 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 it makes it almost the, the, the Sauvignon makes the palate gritty. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's, yeah, it's got, it's got almost like a finale character or, or like a, a pithy character to it. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely textured, mm. textured mm. out, and I think you're right with that pithy. But without the the bitterness that comes with that pithy, yeah. pithy element, it just fills your palate a little bit more. Um, it's, I, I agree with you with that Bordeaux style. It's mm. it, even without, it's very um, sincere style for me. Yeah, when when I taste it, it's lovely. So there's so there's only seventeen percent in a semi or green. Yeah, and yeah. it shows you that the, the the structure of that wine. Yeah, is it's definitely so, um, it's so prominent in a good way, where you would, you would expect as you would say it would have been a lot more racy, a lot more semi yeah. blanky. Where it's, it's a beautiful way. how it cleaned out because it's um it's got uh, it's got great focus like and it's like when we, because I fermented. A lot of, I put the, the Sauvignon Blanc into a tank with its skins for about two days, so it extracted all of that um, of, of, of that aromas into it, and then we, we blended this, the semio with it. So it's um, it's just cleaning out, and it's it's just very pure, quite impressive. And the semio we get from Francia. Mm. And that and just in front of that house. Um, that house is um, it's owned by the the, the old C or uh, the ex CFO of of um, Shoprite. Oh. Yeah, so it's his vineyard. Um, Karl Husen, very nice guy. So it's all everything is. This is our entire friendship production here. So it's um, everything is 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 from 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 this just this parcel here. No, it is, this wine is so evolved. Yeah. I remember when we bottled it, it had um, a little bit of a reductive note, but also a little bit flinty. But now it's it's more like Christmas spices, you know. Yeah. yeah. I wish people would 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 um, treat white wine more like red wine. Mm -hmm. Like it's uh, so like don't 
except that you you can just make it and bottle it and then drink it yeah. because it's a white wine. Is you should give it a little more respect. Oh. Yeah, I think that's where really, there's, there's definitely a misperception. Yeah, um, yeah. and misunderstanding on how to. So I think this one will only improve now for at least the next three years or so. It's delicious.